All right, so welcome back. Um, now that we went through the 1909 Ticker uh, Digest interview um, that uh, Richard Wyckoff set out to basically verify the claims that he heard about uh, W.D. Gunn and the extraordinary calls uh, he was making. And now uh, we're going to go through some public records of guns from uh, the years 1933 to 1935. And you can actually Google um, guns trading records and it's, it's all over the internet. You'll see it's uh, verified, uh, verified sources. Um, yeah, so let's just get into it. So in January 1933, uh, it states here the 400 share lot transactions were begun on June 4th, 1931 and were completed on December 28th, 1932. This showed a net profit of $90,570 after deduction of $5,121 for commission and taxes. So this is a record of Gan's accountant uh, basically giving a summary of um, certain time periods. Uh, now, 90,000 doesn't seem like a lot, but 90,000 back in 1933 was, has the purchasing power of 1.9 million today, so almost 2 million. Um, August 5th, 1933 continues covering the period from April 1st to July 31st. 1933, Yu Gan made a total of 344 trades in stocks, cotton, rubber, and grain. 310 of these trades showed profits and 34 showed losses. Your percentage of accuracy was 89% on the total number of trades. The capital with which you operated was increased 26 and a half times. 26 and a half times. On each 1,000 capital with which you started, you made a profit of 26,500 net. This was after paying all taxes, interest and commissions and deductions of all losses. So he says, yours truly, SJM, his, uh, that was his uh, certified public accountant, and that's in New York. May 1933. I have examined the broker statements and trades made by W.D. Gunn during the month of April 1933. Cotton account, $8,136.29. Rubber account, $1,387.01. And the grain account, $758.30 for a total of $10,281.60. During that time, <clears throat> sorry, there was only one loss of $39.25, and the above profits are net after payment of broker's commissions. There were other trades in cotton, rubber, and stocks at the end of the month that had not been closed out, which showed profits. When the, other tra when the trading on the above account was started, the greatest risk taken was $800, or in other words, if the stop-loss orders had been caught, the loss would have been $800. So here's... Uh, um, in a different format, this trading record for 1933 from August 1st to December 31st. Total number of trades, 135, 112 showed profits and 23 losses. So his accuracy in that uh, time period was 83%. Percentage of profits to losses, 89.9%. The total number of trades for the entire year of 1933, 479 trades of which 422 were profits and 57 showed losses. So percentage accuracy of 88.1% and percentage of profits on capital used, 4,000 or 40 for one. So I've never seen anybody trade like this, never heard of anybody trade like this. You know, people are usually in the trading community, if they're doing 60, 65% accuracy, um, you know, they're they're claiming that they know what they're doing. So Gan was getting 80, 90% accuracy. And I have managed to duplicate this accuracy. Um, on average, I am between uh, 80 and 85%. So trading record for 1934. From January 1st to December 31st, total number of trades, 362. Cotton, 147 trades, of which 135 showed profits and 12 losses. Grain, 170 trades, of which... 161 showed profits and nine losses. Rubber, 23 trades, of which 21 showed profits and two losses. Silver, seven trades, of which seven showed profits and zero losses. Silk, four trades, of which three showed profits and one loss. And in stocks, 11 trades, of which 10 showed profits and one loss. Total for the year, 
362 trades of which 337 showed profits and 25 losses. So basically averaging almost one trade a day. Percentage of accuracy on the total number of trades, 93.9%. Percentage of profits to losses, 93.1%. Percentage of profits on capital used, 800% or 8 to 1. 841, sorry. Uh, then we go into 1935. Commodities, total trades in cotton, grain, and rubber, 98, of which 83 showed profits and 15 showed losses. So his percentage of accuracy on the total number of trades were 80, was 85%. Percentage of profits to losses, 82%. And percentage of profits on capital used, 336%. And in stocks, total number of trades, 34, of which 29 showed profits and 5 losses. Percentage of accuracy on the total number of trades, 85.5%. And the percentage of profits to losses, 83%. Percentage of profits on capital used, 100%. And such a, such a record of accuracy, accuracy uh, proves that W.D. Gunn had, in fact, discovered a master time factor and cycle theory that works and can be depended on in the future. So we can see the outstanding, outstanding um, accuracy that Gunn had, and he repeated it uh, year after year. And now that we have um, pretty much settled the claim of who Gan was and what he was able to do, um, now we can move on into the next part of the course, which we will be discussing uh, divergence. And the reason that we will be discussing, discussing divergence is because um, this course is going to be based on a hidden method in Gan's book, Truth of the Stock Tape which shows uh, a hidden divergence method that uh, I guarantee you've never seen before. And uh, we're first, we're going to go through what the public knows as divergence, which is basically using divergence with an indicator. And we will not be using indicators in the methods that we learned from Gan, as Gan did not have indicators. Um, so yeah, see you in the next part.